This is Amber Trueblood. She's a licensed therapist, a mother of, to four boys, and she's an author of this very useful book, Stretch Marks. And look at, you know, I, you said I could write in it. So I love it. I don't like to write in books, but because you said I could, I did. So, and it's very helpful. So I wanted to talk to you about like what this book is about and why you wrote it. Yeah. Well, you know, as as you said, I'm a mom to four boys and they're all within five years and two months of each other. So it was really quick. And when I was kind of, I call it in the weeds with the little ones, you know, I look to books. I'm a, an avid bibliophile. Like I love books. I love words. I'd love just like having books around me, even if they're not open and I'm not reading them. So I know your audience can probably relate to that. Not all people can. They look at you like you're a little wacko, but I get it. And so that's what I did. I looked to books to help me to get answers. Like, how do you do this? How do I not feel lost and alone and frustrated and overwhelmed and like resentful, but then like guilty that I felt resentful, you know? And how do I feel like um, exhausted, but at the same time, like kind of like bored and unfulfilled because I'm not doing anything to refuel me emotionally. I'm just trying to keep everybody like alive and safe and <laughs> fed, you know, and um, I'm just like barely keeping my head above water. So I looked to books and, you know, I found great stories. I found interesting writing. I found, you know, tips that were helpful for that person to get through the weeds of whatever their challenge was, whether or not it was parenting, like any any big challenge in life, right? We've all had them. And yeah. uh, it could be taking care of an elderly, you know, person in your family. It could be a job loss. It could be a relationship breakup, you know, all sorts of things. We all survive, right? Yeah. And that's part of the reason, by the way, that it's called stretch marks, because it's not just about the stretch marks that you get from pregnancy, right? We all have stretch marks, which means like we all have gone through trauma We've all gone through challenge that we've grown from, right? We've expanded in that process. And I would argue that we are more um, resilient. We are more, we're wiser. We're more knowledgeable. We're more experienced as a result of going through that, right? Like, I, you know what? I was so glad to read that in your book because when I read Stretch Marks, I thought, oh, you know, it's for a particular audience. But then you said you applied it further and said it's it's about growing, it's about experiences, it's about be embracing these things that stretched you. And I thought right. that was very important. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So that's what it's all about. But what happened was I couldn't find in books the answers that were going to help me. I'd find this little piece over here, and I'd find this little piece over here. And I have a degree in, um, in clinical psychology, and I have a license and a master's in um, psychology, and, and I have an MBA, and I have all these kids. And so I just started reading. I read everything about like human development and, you know, um, neuropsychology and neurobiology and because I love brain stuff. And, uh, and then I read about meditation and visualization. I just kind of like read across the board as much as I could. And like, as a result of like all of that, like my personal experience, my education, and then all of these various books I read, I started pulling together what helped me mm -hmm. kind of get back to me you know, and feel calm, feel like I had space, feel I had patience, learn the communication skills, all of those things. And I was like, oh, great. Now I can write the book that I wish I had had 10 years ago. Yes. And, and so I that, agree that's the book. It's, it's pretty thin, but it's packed with so much wonderful, useful information. And you did all the work for us. I mean, I agree. I don't know how many self-help books I've read, but if I would have had this when my daughter was like two, I, I, it would have been oh, amazing, but it actually does help me now that my daughter is nine too. But yeah, you condensed it. And, and I just love that it's, it's thinner so that right. it's not overwhelming. You know, we're already right. overwhelmed. <laughs> Which is exactly what I don't want to do. And I also didn't want to make it feel like homework, like boring. Like I love reading really funny, silly authors like Jenny Lawson and like, 
that make me like cry laugh because it's so crazy what they're talking about. And so I wanted to, and I'm silly. Like my personality is naturally very silly, even though I like, I nerd out in certain areas. Like we all have multifaceted personalities, right? And so I wanted to show that. In fact, my editor at several times was like, reel it in. Like it was a little too <laughs> off the wall. So my next book is I'm, I'm granting myself a little bit more flexibility there, yeah. but, um, but he was like, look, this is your first book. <laughs> Chill out a little bit. Well, he I love, said, oh, I'm sorry. When you were like, I, you know, smash your eyes shoulds. I mean, I laughed through that whole part and, and especially you gave, you gave it a, a name and <laughs> yeah, I love metaphor. I love silly metaphors. So I wanted to make it fun to read so that you come out and you feel like you were entertained, but then you're also like, oh my gosh, I just got like three amazing tips that I know would work for me. And I can like actually do them for free without like studying anything. You know, I can just try it tonight and see if it works with my family or works for me personally. And, and that's what I wanted because the other thing that, that was really inspiring to me about writing this book is a lot of parenting books or and self-help books, any sort of transformational nonfiction has like, this is what you do. This will help everybody do it in this way, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. And for the most part, I mean, granted, there's a bunch of books that I love, but you know, I felt like everybody, all of your, everybody in your audience is different. You all have different values, different priorities, different lifestyles, different family dynamics. Um, different and you're different now than you were a few years ago yes. and you're going to be different a few years from now. Mm-hmm. So like, how the heck am I supposed to know what will work for you given all those different variables, right? Yeah. So yeah. I wanted to write something that was very like, and I don't love the word empowering, but like giving over to the reader, like, hey, it's your responsibility. You know yourself best. Mm-hmm. So be kind to yourself. Don't set yourself up by saying like, oh my gosh, I'm going to get up at 5 a.m., run five miles, do a two-hour meditation, eat a kale shake, and then I'll be ready for my day. <laughs> for some people, they can totally do that. And that's the best thing for them. Yeah. Not for me. I don't want to run to the edge of the street. Like I don't want to run to the stop sign no. at all. Like I, I, I only to- run when I'm being chased. So there yeah. you go. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And even then sometimes I'll be like, you got me. <laughs> so but on those that's along those same lines, um, you might have some self care tips that apply to the majority of the people, maybe mothers, women. So if you wanted to talk through some self-care tips that you- Oh, I would love to. So I think right now is getting back to basics for a lot of people. Sometimes the simplest, the simplest self-care tools and strategies are the ones we don't do. And we all know them there. It's not rocket science. Mm -hmm. So like, let me ask your audience, like, are you drinking enough water? Are you drinking enough water? Are you drinking like kind of a good amount of water, but then you're drinking three cups of coffee in the morning and two glasses of wine at night? <laughs> if you're doing that, you got to drink more water. Yeah. So what I like to say is like, yes, you know in your head, but what's the disconnect that's happening between knowing you should probably drink more water? Oh, I probably have less headaches. I'd probably sleep better at night. I probably eat less like junk food thinking I'm hungry when really I'm thirsty because our body gets confused that way. But what's the step between that and actually doing it? So maybe you love water with lemon. Okay, next time you go to the grocery store, grab a couple lemons, put the lemon in it. Maybe you know you'll chug water more when it's cold. Grab a big jug, throw it in the fridge so that you have cold water. Maybe if you don't see it, you won't drink it. So put a glass of water by your by in the bathroom, put one next to your bed, put one next to your computer. So things like that, ask yourself at one point, just sit down, how, what can I do that can facilitate, that can help me more easily, not make it like, or the other thing you can do is I love to, if you're trying to create a new habit Mm -hmm. or, or rekindle one that you used to have that you knew helped you, but you don't do it anymore. um, Pair it with something you already do four or five times a day. So right now, if you're washing your hands four or five times a day, pair it with that. So I would often do that with mantras. I love mantras. So if you pair it with something you're already doing, 
the the time it takes to make it a habit is much shorter. It you'll find you'll do it, you know, much more readily. Or if like every time you walk past the kitchen, you chug some water, you know, make it make it a habit that way. So drinking water is like my number one. The second one, if we have time, would be slow deep breathing. And this is good for anxiety, mental clarity, emotional calm, like, and not just because oh, you know, just bliss out and breathe deeply, like chill out, you know, you're being yeah. ridiculous. Like it's not for that. Like yeah. literally when you do slow, deep breathing, your body releases chemicals, your brain releases chemicals, your adrenaline and cortisol levels are more likely to relax. Your body believes, oh, you're not being chased by anybody, right? Yeah. You're not under duress. You're not about to be attacked. So your body can relax. It can have blood flow going to the places that it needs, right? For your metabolism to work, for your immune system to work well, for your brain to be clearer. So I would say if anybody, if you take anything away from this, it's find ways that you can allow yourself to drink more water throughout the day more easily. And on that same note, first thing in the morning and last thing at night, at the very least, if you could spend a few minutes doing some slow deep breathing that will help you the whole rest of your day I wanted to so yes. I totally marked this in the book I just love that you do several pages of just breathe and while I was reading it I I actually did take your oh, note good. And breathe deeper and yeah those I mean really those are very simple but so important because I don't even have a bottle of water on my desk right now so I mean it's, those are just some great things that anybody can do and to feel better. And so, yeah, I agree with you, but there, this book goes much, much deeper. And the back of the book is, I love this so much because you do a summary of each chapter and the tools you can use. And mm -hmm. that is something I'm going to keep going back to again and again. And I think that, um, Every mother, every, it's not just mothers too. Every woman who is stretched too thin, I think would benefit from reading stretch marks. So I, I think so too. So I, I, I really appreciate you taking this time and like highlighting the book. Cause I'm passionate about it. You can see like my whole thing is wanting to help overwhelmed moms in any way I can. And my first attempt to do that was through books because that's, that's what I love. And, um, but it's also on audible. So if people, you know, if you want to listen to this kind of book walking around, mm -hmm. it's, you know, I recorded it. And so you can listen to it on audible as well. Oh, that's so wonderful because I, I get a lot done and, and I can listen and get, read some books while I'm, you know, doing the laundry or, you know, washing dishes. So that's good to know. Very cool. Well, thank you so much. I really enjoyed our conversation and um, yeah, every, I'm going to do it one more time. Stretch marks. Yay. <laughs> You're welcome, fun. Annie. Thank you for having me. Should we all take one dip, be like big, deep breath in and out? Okay. Relax your shoulders though, first, because we always go like this yeah. and then relax your face and go. Breathe in through your nose. And out through your mouth. Perfect. Thank you so much. You're welcome. My pleasure. Bye.